President Trump clashing with the media over wearing a mask. Take a look. Well, I did wear, I had one on before. I wore one in this back area, but I didn't want to give the press the pleasure of seeing it. But no, where I had it in the back area, I did put a uh, mask on. The media grilling Trump on masks after a new study finds that wearing one can reduce coronavirus spread by 75 percent. And a shocking reversal from the CDC is upending a key warning about the spread of COVID-19. The government agency now saying the virus does not spread easily on contaminated surfaces and is mainly transmitted through person-to-person contact. All right, Dana, let's just start with the whole mask deal From a communications perspective, I can understand why the president doesn't want to give the media that photograph of him wearing a mask. Do you understand why? I do, but I also think that he wants people to get back to work. And one of the best ways to get people back to work um, and make them feel comfortable is to wear uh, people are going to have to wear masks. Um, or they're going to be asked to wear a mask. Private businesses are asking people to wear a mask. I think the more that we make it a stigma against wearing masks, the worse it will be. And I think if he were to wear a mask, um, I don't care what the media says. I, you know, And I don't love wearing a mask either, but I think that if people were willing to wear a mask and like, hey, this is what we're doing, we're protecting ourselves, we're protecting each other, and we, and we are getting back to work, that if you couple mask wearing with this new CDC information that it's person to person and not on surfaces. You know, if it's not on surfaces, that really does help business think about, okay, maybe we can get people back to work even sooner. Um, So I think that's all moving in the right direction. I wouldn't worry so much about what the media is going to say about wearing a mask. If you want people to get back to work, give them some encouragement and tell them to wear a mask. Yeah, Greg. And I mean, can you believe now it's not that transmissible when the surface is touched and i mean this this is the main thing we heard very early on and that's what people were doing we're spraying everything we came in contact with yeah as a person who sleeps on a lot of surfaces i feel a great sense of relief (laughs) look um there was a story about surfaces uh the viruses actually lived on the surface for 18 hours do you remember the press ran with that Mm -hmm. and then it turned out when you you, you when you listen to the experts it wasn't the virus per se the active component it was some like dormant useless leftover part of it but the the media helps pushing this and in a weird way they push uh organizations like the cdc into a corner and doctors generally real doctors as you've noticed with fauci and others are very cautious about everything because nothing is for sure and everybody in this climate has made a mistake everybody even me and i know that's hard to fathom, but this is a new, wow. pheno- I know, this is it once, this is a new phenomenon. And some mistakes will kill people, we've seen that. Some decisions were lucky. There was a non-expert decision to stop travel from a non-expert, President Trump, and it turned out the experts had to admit that he was right. The CDC was initially wrong on masks because maybe they wanted to stop a run on supplies. That's fine, but it was still wrong. Because even a crappy mask, if you make one yourself, is still going to reduce and create friction, a, a, a barrier between you and somebody else. I do understand, though, uh, Trump's uh, reluctance to hand the media a photo op. And I can't argue with him about media because he hasn't been wrong. He hasn't been wrong on that. Kind of like you, Greg. Hasn't been wrong. Uh, Katie, you know, one of the reasons a lot of people changed some of the protocols early on and as this thing develops is because we didn't know a lot about this early on because of China. China destroyed samples. They didn't communicate what they had found. We had to learn things a month later from our allies in Europe. And we're still learning more and more about this today. Well, I just have to say, for the record, I was the one stocking up on toilet paper before anybody else on the show and telling people to be prepared. So I will take that as a win in the win category for KDP. Um, But on the issue of China, of course, we've talked all about that. I do think that there is a huge frustration among the American people when they hear these guidelines being changed, just because, you know, they they are willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. They're willing to do the 15 day, stop the spread, the 30 day, now we're 60 days in. And what we were told about 
the way this thing spreads and the justification for not going to work and losing businesses and jobs is now different. And I think people are very frustrated between the media and the changes in the mask policy and the way, you know, the, the information that we're getting. They don't know what to trust and where to get their information. So now people are like, well, I've been told 50 different things by the media and by the government. So I would just like to take my chances and get back to work. Yeah, well, and so if you think about the two main things that we've now learned recently, sunlight really has a detrimental effect on this virus being outside. And if it's not as transmissible from surface, then it looks like the main area of transmission is really, really close human to human contact. And I think that should guide our policy going forward. Sure, and I think we're learning more as we get more research and, and the doctors and the scientists uh, can reach stronger conclusions, Jesse. I'm not sure I would condemn people for uh, you know, what they said before, what they said now, because I think we're all in a learning process. In fact, I think there's lots of good oh, news I'll condemn about if I want, progress Juan. being made. I will <laughs> condemn if I want. Well, I, I get that idea. <laughs> I know you, so I, I, I know what I'm in for. Uh, but I was going to say, I think there's lots of good news uh, coming from that scientific expert community on the vaccines. They're making progress. I think the rate, there's a decline in the rate of infection all over the country. Um, but there's certainly no arguing about the fact that we're now approaching 100,000 Americans who will have lost their lives. That's a lot of people, Jesse, and you can understand why they would try to tell us, be cautious, you know, and they, when they weren't sure about surfaces, watch out for surfaces. I still think you need to watch out. It's not that you should ignore surfaces. But the latest thing that catches my attention is that now you see the scientists and the doctors saying, watch out for the second wave. And it's not in New York uh, or any other big city, but look in places like Maine and Iowa and Oklahoma. Uh, I saw just today that the mayor of Montgomery, Alabama says his his uh, hospitals are overwhelmed. They have no more in beds for intensive care. I think we've all got to be cautious going forward. All right.